Hey everybody, so uh, welcome to my neighborhood. Uh, this is 654 Seneca Avenue. This is actually the building that I grew up in on the third floor right here. That was the um, bedroom. This is Seneca Avenue. It goes pretty far down, uh, cuts through Ridgewood. And it looks really quiet in this uh, photo, which was taken in 2016, but you know, it didn't used to be quiet. Um, on this corner right here, there used to be a police van that was parked there all day, all night. My neighbors across the street here, they used to yell and argue out in the street. It was a mess. Um, we had friends who lived up here. We used to play with them and stuff in the summertime. Like, we would go around this corner right here, and there's a fire hydrant that we would bust open, and it would be like a water park. Yep, that's the fire hydrant right there. So yeah, it was, you know, like any neighborhood, right? Like lots of kids and families and that kind of thing. Working families, a lot of them immigrant families. If you go further down Seneca, there's a lot of businesses, as you can see. Um, this spot right here used to sell rotisserie chicken, but they closed, and I think it's like a hipster, like, arepa place now, um, which is crazy to think about. Um, but then there's there's still things that still exist that were there when I was growing up, like this 99 cent store, this 24 hour deli. Um, this place, Jade Seneca, used to be, um, well, it still is a Chinese restaurant, but it was the first place that I got a job when I was 14. I worked at, um, as the girl behind the counter, taking phone calls and that kind of thing. This uh, Colombian bakery is so good. Um, I hope they never close. But then if you look across the street here, like this used to be a small laundromat that like, my mom and I would go to, but it had to close down because another laundromat opened up down the street um, and it was bigger and they had, you know, better washers or whatever you want to call it. So this is a train station, um, but if you walk down and you follow the bridge, you eventually hit a more commercial spot um, called Myrtle Avenue. So we used to go there to buy stuff. Um, this is kind of what New York looks like if you go further out so some of the subways are underground but um, where I was like the subway was above ground um, when you hit this corner right here this is um, another train station called Myrtle Wyckoff and actually this station is part of the reason why uh, this neighborhood has changed so much because it uh, is the L train and the L train goes all the way to Williamsburg which is like the most hipster part of Brooklyn um, most people know it as a hipster spot but also, like, you can see signs of gentrification, like Dunkin' Donuts right here, Planet Fitness right here, CVS. Like, we didn't have those things growing up. And even this photo is a little bit outdated because this area, this whole block right here, it's all closed off to traffic now. So it's kind of like people can, like, sit out there and, like, pretend like it's a cafe or something. And you can't even see it, but... Um, because it opened this year, but a Starbucks actually opened around the corner, which, you know, when Starbucks comes, you know your neighborhood is gone. Um, if you go further down Myrtle, you know, it's a it's a business area, so there's lots of, like, small shops. But it's, like, in between all of it, you see, like, serious signs of gentrification, right? Um, I don't even recognize it sometimes when I go um, home. If you go further up Myrtle, um, actually I want to show y'all a spot that um, definitely changed. Like this is the, um, this used to be the movie theater, the neighborhood movie theater. And if you notice, there's a sign up now that says that they have bedrooms for rent starting at $2,300. Um, that's kind of crazy for a one bedroom in this neighborhood because like growing up, like we paid like maybe $700 for the entire apartment, right? Um, like it wasn't a big apartment, but still it was affordable for a family, but $2,300 for a one bedroom, like nobody could afford that except for like young professionals, right? And you know, crazy to think about, like this used to be a movie theater. So like, instead of like turning it back into a movie theater, they just sold it to some developers. And it's wild because like when I was younger, like they closed the theater because it was um, really dangerous, like people started getting stabbed there and stuff. Um, and they closed it and they never opened it back up. But I always had like these ideas, like I was like, you know, I could like, you know, turn this into something cool. Like if 
I had a lot of money and could buy it or something. So I had little dreams for that place. Like I was like, maybe I could buy a movie theater, um, start showing like cool documentaries or that kind of thing. But obviously that never happened because I ended up coming to Providence. Um, this is a supermarket. Um, so if you turned around the corner up from the station, this is the supermarket we used to go to. Um, but it's kind of gotten too expensive for people in the neighborhood. And then this candy store, ooh, it doesn't even look like a candy store because actually it was recently busted for um, trafficking coke. So yeah, it's, gentrification is kind of a crazy thing because, you know, it's happening all the while. Like people are still trying to like live and like trying to raise their families and stuff. Um, and like even when I go back to this neighborhood now, like there's signs of like the old Ridgewood, but then there's also definitely like new things that I don't recognize. Um, so yeah, that's my neighborhood.